This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. But the real star of today's show is the Next Level Racing FGT Lite chassis or cockpit, whatever you want to call it. Next Level Racing, they've been making rigs for a long time. They make a variety of rigs from wheel stands to full rigs, starter rigs, pro rigs, the whole gamut of rigs. But when I first saw the FGT Lite, I was rather intrigued. It's a different type of concept. It's very similar to the Play Seat Challenger in that it's a collapsible rig. It's something that's very easy to store away. It's a lightweight, easy to adjust, quick to set up type of rig, and it goes for $299. Now, in addition to being collapsible or easy to store, it's also a convertible rig, and it'll switch from formula to GT driving to position, or really anything in between. And you can even check at the, at the Next Level website where they have videos showing five different positions. You could probably come up with more than that. So what do you get for $299? You get the rig itself. It's a full chassis from seat all the way down to pedal deck. It even comes with a shifter mount, left or right side mountable. Uh, it is a fabric. It's like sort of an Alicantara type, I don't think it really is, fabric that covers and it's stretched between these metal tubes, a lot like a chaise lounge or a piece of pool furniture, something like that. It is stretched between it and it kind of holds you, suspends you a little bit like a hammock a little bit. It has this ventilated area in the middle to make it a little more breathable. And then it's got these padded sections just for comfort and to kind of keep you centered nicely in the rig. It has these hubs. There are four of these hubs. These are the quick adjusters. You loosen the hub, you change the position, you lock the hub. And that is part of how you dial the rig in and it's also how you, how you switch it from GT to formula or any position in between. Now, looking at these hubs, we'll talk about them. There are four of them, one here, 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 and another one down there on the pedal. Those hubs actually allow you to adjust. But if you notice, that is the distance between clicks. So you don't have a huge variety of adjustment. There are kind of fixed positions that are going to work or not work for all the areas that you're going to make those adjustments. So when you get down through the seat area, you get to the wheel deck. The wheel deck, which is highly adjustable, it has about four different positions front to back giving you a little bit of adjustment there. It also has about 45 degrees of range and tilt, allowing you to get the wheel pretty much wherever you need it to be. No up and down adjustment other than the angle here, but you don't have a whole lot of positions to choose from. The shifter mount, the shifter mount, same thing. It's got a pull, it goes down. This plate is pre-drilled for Fanatic, Logitech, Thrustmaster, all your common gear. Same thing with the wheel deck. Now, the way the wheel deck works, in order to get in and out of the rig, you open the clamp, you unlock it, and then this whole thing is on a swing arm. Watch your ears though, it does make a little bit of noise. And then it swings back down into position like that. The front legs, these have adjusters. They have a pin, you can lock them in. You've got a handful of different positions to raise or lower the front of the seat, that'll change the seat angle. It'll also change how far out it pushes the pedals. Now the pedals are another interesting thing. They hook onto the rig right here with a connector. They are also adjustable in angle, but again, using those hubs, you just have a, mat, a handful of different positions from flat, which is about 10 degrees of rake. There's one, there's one, there's one, to about 35 total degrees of rake or about 25 degrees of adjustment. Right here, we have the genius of the next level FGT light. You have slots going all the way across and you have two different rails, one for the front or leading edge of your pedals, one for the back. That means when I loosen these, I can move these up and down and that allows me to space them to fit just about any set of pedals that I can possibly think of. Everything from Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fanatic. It'll work with my Rickmotech. It'll work with HPPs. It'll work with Husingveld's. With this type of an idea, and I hope other manufacturers take notice, and then you just lock them down. You have a, these slots going across. It's gonna work for any pedals. It's really stiff, really solid, really brilliant. It does have a different shape and size, whether you're in formula or GT style. In the GT configuration, it's about 68 and a half by 29 and a half by 50 inches or 175 by 75 by 127 centimeters. In the Formula One configuration, it's about 64 and a half inches by 29 and a half by 37 inches or 164 by 75 by 94 centimeters. 
So like I said, the entire rig, it'll accommodate any Thrustmaster, Logitech, or Fanatic gear. It'll work with any set of pedals out there. It's highly adjustable by the pure nature of the rig, being able to switch from GT to Formula in all those positions, all those adjustments. It is one of the highly, most highly adjustable rigs that I've ever been in. Uh, in addition to that, it'll handle a driver anywhere from four foot all the way up to six foot five, so it'll accommodate even up to 287 pounds. It's a wide seat, it's a tall seat, and it'll even make someone like me feel rather small. It's that kind of tall seat. The top is padded, so you're not gonna smack your head when you're getting in and out. The adjustments or switches from GT to formula can be done in a matter of minutes. I found that the wheel position was still relatively where it belonged, just a slight change in angle, and I was dialed in. The, the shifter mount would move with the seat bottom so that that would always stay parallel and be in the right position as well. So any position was good and the comfort was about the same across the board. Now, when it comes to assembling the Next Level Racing FGT Lite, the best thing you can do is go to their website. They have a video there that shows you how to put it together. They do a better job than even I could. They also have a video showing you how to change it from one of five different positions that they name. Great videos, great resources for you. But it was pretty easy. You pull it out of the box, it's mostly built. You throw a bar on down here, you throw the shifter mount on there, you throw the wheel deck on, and you're up and running. It comes with all the hardware to mount your common gear, so all the bolts you need to mount your wheel, your shifter, your pedals. In my case, I was using an AIO log shifter. I had to make a little adapter with 8020, just bolted it to that, worked like a champ as well. So what's it like driving? I mean, what's the comfort on a hammock, on a pool, chaise lounge type rig? Well, the comfort is actually really good. The suspended seat is more comfortable than I thought it was gonna be. These padded sections, they held me in place really nicely and gave me some extra comfort as well. It's hard to judge, but I felt like this netting was more ventilated and allowed for me to sit without getting overheated as well. And I drove it in both formula, I drove it in GT position, and in both positions I found it to be very comfortable and I could sit there for hours. I could probably even do an endurance race in it. Now, let's talk about the critical things. I mean, when I think about driving, it comes down to like stability. Now I was doing a lot of my driving in VR and in driving in VR, I thought everything was as good as could be. But then when I really watched the footage later, I found that there was a fair amount of wheel deck wobble. And I would say for that the hardcore sim racers out there, it's excessive. Did I try a direct drive wheel on this? No. At $299, I don't feel it was intended for a direct drive wheel. I'd even be nervous about putting a club sport base just because of the way this swing arm is. And when it's sitting out there, it's just resting on this one arm and that's about it. Now, the wiggle was there and it was noticeable, but for a $299 lightweight rig, it was probably within the boundaries of reasonable. If you were looking for the ultimate stiffness in a rig, then for $299, I'd go to a wheel stand, even from next level racing that would be rigid as could be, or I'd consider a different route. But if you're looking for something lightweight, collapsible, convertible GT to Formula One, that's probably an acceptable amount of wiggle considering all of those factors. The positioning of the wheel was really pretty good. I was able, whether it was GT or Formula, to get that wheel at the angle, at the distance, and in the position that I wanted, so I was pretty happy with the way it worked out there. The shifter, the shifter is probably one of the better aspects. It was actually fairly rigid. It had no up and down or left or right adjustment. It just had that angle adjustment, which really I found only one position to be in the realm of what I wanted. But again, for 299, I don't even expect there to be a shifter mount, let alone one that works rather well. And then come the pedals. The pedals, again, the pedal mount was genius. It was very rigid, it was very stiff, and 99 out of 100 situations, it was absolutely perfect. There are scenarios where it might lift just a little bit here under certain brakes, if you have at the too high a pressure, something like that, but even then, it's not moving anywhere. It's a solid, solid mount, even at a high angle. It was very solid, it allowed for great braking, and it accepted, again, any pedals that are out there. So the overall driving experience, comparing it to a pro rig, on a level of comfort, it can rival it. I mean, this seat was more comfortable than a Kirky seat. This seat was not as comfortable as a perfectly padded Sparco, 
probably fell somewhere slightly between the two. When it came to rigidity, it cannot even compare to a purpose-built rig or a rig that might cost $1,000 and quite honestly might weigh 10 times as much as this one does. This rig only weighs about 42 pounds, that with my equipment, maybe 60 pounds. So after hours of driving in VR, driving it in both GT and Formula, I found that in a lot of ways this rig was actually surprisingly better than I thought it would be. And in other ways, like the wheel deck wobble, it was less than you'd really want for a pro level rig. But let's go ahead and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, just to make it perfectly clear for everybody out there. Starting off with the good, and that being that it's relatively inexpensive. Really good pedal mount. Works with all. Works with almost any pedal set. Two in one rig. GT and F1 style position. Compatible with all common gear. Pre drilled. Highly adjustable. Simple. Easy to use. Collapsible, good for storage. Easy to move, lightweight. Fits a variety of driver's shapes and sizes. Includes shifter mount, left or right mount. And now on to the not so good. Fair amount of wheel deck wobble. Wheel deck squeaks when open and closed. Adjustment hubs have limited positions to choose from. Wheel deck angle adjustment could be stronger. Seat back is very tall and very large. And now on to the bottom line. $299. This is a starter rig price. Now, I would not consider this only a starter rig. And if you are looking for the most rigid rig out there, for $299, I think you can even accomplish that better with some other rigs or even a DIY rig. Now, for $299, if you're looking for a starter rig that will fold up and go into a closet, if you're looking for a starter rig that is minimalistic in design for the VR intended drivers, this is a perfect rig for you. Taking the word starter away, if you are a hardcore sim racer and you're looking for a second rig because you have extra equipment, your friends come over, you want them to drive, well, you could put this in your closet. Is it perfect for that? No. It is perfect for that extra rig. Is it a perfect rig? No but it is perfect for that scenario of somebody looking for a second rig. Take me. I don't do VR racing on my main rig. This is a perfect extra rig for VR purpose sim racing alone. So it does have its purpose even in the hands of a pro or veteran sim racer out there. And then lastly, you have another group that I think this rig is really intended for. The guys who are still on desktop, some of them, maybe it's their preferred method of driving. But for others, it's because of space. They just don't have the room. Maybe they're in a dorm or a small bedroom trying to do their sim racing. Well, again, even if you only fold it up halfway like I do and slide it into the corner, it is a space-saving rig. It is easy enough to fold up and easy enough to slide into the corner that you're not going to not do it versus a rig that takes a lot of effort. The ease of adjustment the ability to switch quickly from GT to formula, the ease to pack it away and put it away are some of the best assets of this rig and some of the best pros that I could give you. I mean, that is the reason, that is the justification for this rig, and I think it's gonna be a perfect rig for people who are really getting to this new and don't wanna burden themselves with a complicated rig to build or something that is gonna be an eyesore in their room when they can just slide it and put it away. So I hope that tells you everything that you could possibly want to know about the Next Level Racing FGT Light Cockpit. If you do have any further questions, always, you can contact me at sean 
at thesimpit.com and I'll do my best to answer them there. Definitely go to the nextlevelracing.com website, check out the videos on how to convert it, check out the assembly video and get any more details that you might want there. That's gonna do it for this one. Get out there, do some sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track. Getting in and out of the GT position is very easy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you need to lock the cams before you sit in the rig. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> oh my god! You know... I'm not sure... Well, hey, we almost put it into GT position just like that.